the Falcons. Agent Sindrich says the details of the agreement will be announced later today. And in baseball, the Pirates snapped a five-game losing streak yesterday with a 5-2 win over the San Diego Padres in San Diego. The victory was the first since June of 1984 for Bucks pitcher Lee Tunnel. The Bucks now face the Dodgers tonight in Los Angeles. Larry Wick Williams will be pitted against Rick Honeycutt. Patty? Now, for some people in the news, it will be a quiet birthday celebration for Rose Kennedy today. The 95-year-old Kennedy matriarch is spending the day with her clan in Hyannisport, Massachusetts. Boston will be celebrating her birthday with dedication ceremonies for the Rose Kennedy Garden on Boston's waterfront. Senator Edward Kennedy is expected to stand in for his mother. Now, despite a stroke last year, Rose Kennedy is said to be doing very well. She is 95 years of age today. Well, Pittsburghers better be ready for Bruce Springsteen. We've already learned that he's doing a concert at Three River Stadium. Now listen to the frenzy that's in store. In Cleveland, Sunday's newspaper ran an ad for ticket sales for his concert there. Well, that ad was already outdated. You see, Saturday, 65,000 tickets to see Bruce Springsteen sold out in under three hours. Treasure hunter Mel Fisher. This was quite a weekend. He hit pay dirt. Dirt which was on the bottom of the Florida Straits off Key West. There, Fisher found the lost cargo from a Spanish galleon which sank in a hurricane back in 1622. That lost cargo included a reef of silver bars five feet high. What a sight. And then I noticed the silver bars just laid out all over the place. I knew what it was as soon as I saw it. Fisher and his crew had searched for 15 years for the cargo. It's worth an estimated $400 million and will take two and a half years to reclaim from the bottom of the ocean. To prevent theft, Fisher and his crew have 40 armed guards patrolling the waters over the treasure. And here's a story with a twist. The Indiana Pretzel Company is one of the only pretzel manufacturers in the United States to make pretzels the old-fashioned way. Barry Bernson tells us they make them by hand. There is a lot of crooked dough in Tell City, Indiana. But don't worry, it's all legit. It's in the form of unborn pretzels at the Tell City Pretzel Company. Now, if you had to go through what a pretzel does, you'd never stand for it. First it's kneaded, then made into little strips, then hand twisted, then boiled in water and caustic soda. You'll love the sophisticated salting process. Sharon Carter uses a hammer to shake down the salt. From here, it's into two different baking ovens. And finally, 90 minutes from start to finish, it's pretzels. Tell City Pretzel has been doing things just this way since 1911. Uh, its size is unique in that it's a, large, a larger pretzel. And the uh, hand twisting makes them unique in that we're one of the few left in the United States to take the time to do it that way. Ms. Carter has turned out six million hand-twisted pretzels since she started work here in 1978. That works out to 30 pretzels a minute. If you've never done it before, though, it is virtually impossible. Take my word for it. It's easy to do. It's a lot easier than it looks. All you do is just take, take it, pick it up, flip it, and put your two ends together. How's that? See, so you're not putting your twist in there. It's all in the wrist. Just take it and flip it and turn it like that. The pretzel has come a long way since it was invented 600 years ago in Switzerland surviving all the twists and turns of life. Why not take a pretzel to lunch? It'll never get bent out of shape. Barry Bernson reporting from Tell City, Indiana. And what a treat Pittsburghers have all week long. Marie Torrey is guest hosting on Pittsburgh Today this week. Welcome back, Marie. What a treat oh, this is thanks, for us. Thanks. They say you can't go home again, but don't believe it. <laughs> it's wonderful. It really is. You know, from the day we're born, we're, we're taught by our parents to mind our manners. On today's show, we'll take a close look at this complex world of etiquette with the author of Amy Vanderbilt's complete book of etiquette, Letitia Baldridge. Also, we'll see the results of Jeffrey Bruce's makeover contest, and he is as colorful as the blush that he applies on the women's cheeks. Good to be back, Bill. It's good to see you, Marie. Thank you. And since we've seen you, you've been, been married. married. Yeah. Right. Right. Good. But still very fond of you. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. Lots of happiness to you, Marie. Thank you very much. And you'll be back with us tomorrow, too, oh, and yes. all week long. Look forward to it, Patty. Still to come, less humid and sunny. Those are the key words in the weather forecast. John Parisi is up next. And Joe Carcioni, the greengrocer, will be along with his tip for the day.
on the cob loses sugars rapidly if you don't know how to take care of it, and we'll tell you how later on. It's very, very rare that we find a 16-year-old who needs some help, but uh, Maribeth, the eyebrows in particular, she's 16 years old, and there's something we find usually on a much older woman of about 35 or so. <laughs> <laughs> that's Jeffrey Bruce doing what he does best of all, and that's give makeup advice. Also with us today, Letitia Baldridge, who inherited the mantle of etiquette from Amy Vanderbilt. This is Marie Torrey filling in for Patrice King Brown, who, by the way, hasn't had that baby yet. Welcome to Pittsburgh today. It's Pittsburgh today. I know that Jeffrey Bruce has been a guest on Pittsburgh Today, and uh, from what I understand, uh, you can't come here often enough. They adore you. Oh, thank you. You, uh, and you're so active. You do, well, you've written this book, About Face, which is now in paperback. Thank you. You're a, a regular, a resident uh, makeup consultant on Our Magazine. On Our Magazine once a month, and yeah. Sally Jesse Raphael once a month. Uh -huh, but, but I'm your uh -huh. first guest, aren't I? My first guest. I want guest to welcome you back week. to Pittsburgh. Thanks they so missed you, and they said wonderful things Listen, about you. Listen, I understand, too, that you also said that women in Pittsburgh more than uh, women almost uh -oh. anywhere else in the country Ooh. need your makeup advice. Why, why do you say that? Why do you say that? It's, it's not that they need it the most, but you have New York, where we're from. You have yeah. Los Angeles. Yeah. You have Chicago, which is so-so. But then in the Midwest, the problem is that the people are not there to teach them how to do it. A woman can go into a department store and have a rather incompetent individual make her up yeah. and not show her how to do it. So it's just a waste of time, Marie. I mean, if you go into a store to learn how to be made up, if you don't know how to follow up, then you're sort of... Now, Jeffrey, are you saying they don't know how here? I'm saying that they are sort of caught, sort of caught in a time warp. In other words, women <laughs> are wearing something <laughs> that was attractive on them 20 years ago, and they don't realize that they've gotten older and it's time to do something new. That's a bad rap. I know it's that. true, though, but that it's true, and that's why it hurts the most. Well, I hope you're going to correct <laughs> that today. I hope so. You, uh, we're also going to have today these uh, four winners of yeah. the Jeffrey Bruce Makeover that Contest. Exciting? That is very exciting. Yeah. Now, is it possible that, because uh, we're going to see all four of them, mm -hmm. but is it possible uh, through what you're going to tell us about them, what you did for their makeup, that we could literally learn a few things here. I think so, especially if you, if you understand why I selected them. I got many hundreds of photos and letters, mm -hmm. and I combed, I read every one, I looked at every picture. The women who were selected are very attractive. Mm -hmm. I did not take people, you know, with, you don't know whether to bark or say hello. I didn't want those people particularly. Oh. Because they don't represent the the average woman, I wanted someone I don't know if who was bite you back reasonably here, you know? attractive. <laughs> <laughs> A little higher, and you might. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> newly wed indeed. Wow. <laughs> uh, okay, no, I took, I, that's a very good note on which to conclude women. this, this yes. statement. <laughs> We're going to be back with Jeffrey Bruce and some more talk, uh, hopefully about uh, some talk that is going to teach us how to apply makeup. Absolutely. And we're going to see these four winners. We'll be back in just a few moments. <laughs> comfort and fit no ordinary chair will do what you need is the contour chair lounge the contour chair is built to your exact body specification so it's amazingly comfortable go ahead lean back and relax it's adjustable so that you can elevate your head or your feet the contour chair supports your entire body to help alleviate simple tension fatigue and common everyday aches and pains available in a single or built for two cuddler model so that you and your spouse can snuggle together Contour is perfect for watching TV, reading, eating, relaxing, or just taking a snooze. And it fits into any room decor. Scores of styles, colors, and fabrics to choose from. Pick up the phone and call this toll-free number today and get our free color catalog by return mail. Absolutely no obligation. Call 1-800-228-5010, toll-free. 1-800-228-5010. Call 1-800-228-5010, toll-free. 1-800-228-5010.
Mom's got an inch on me. And I intend to keep it. So to supplement my diet, I take Avail. Avail is the calcium-intensive multivitamin. Calcium helps keep bones strong and straight. But most women don't get enough. And none of the leading multivitamins has the full calcium supplement I need. Avail does. Check the health columns on your need for calcium. Once you've seen the available facts, your multivitamin will be Avail. Calcium-intensive Avail. Jeffrey Bruce is one of our guests today, and he's going to tell us all about uh, how to apply makeup the correct way, which you know, sometimes, I mean, as a, speaking as a customer, as a consumer, I find that I get very confused because you go to one expert who tells you one thing and another one tells you a different thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, how are we to know which one we should follow? I would suggest going to maybe three or four. See if there is any kind of a correlation in colors that they recommend for you. Trust your instincts. I'm not very big on color me beautiful and all that sort of thing. I don't see how, if there are so many billion women in the world, how they all fall into four categories. I never bought that whole school of thought. Mm. I think if you trust your instincts, if people flatter you or people notice you a little bit more, they shouldn't say, Marie, I love your makeup. That's like telling someone what a great facelift they've had. You know, it shouldn't be noticeable. It so in other words, really you spend it. all kinds of money to get the look that you were really born with. Is this what you're saying? No, you're, you're not spending a lot of money because if you do go into a department store and have someone make you up, it is free. And if you level with them and say, I don't have the money to spend today, the greatest cop out, Jeffrey, I'm allergic never, to everything. It's never free because then you have to buy the products. No, you don't. No, you don't. Well, you don't, but you're not going to achieve that look if you don't buy the products. No, but if you like the look, what you have to do is go out and see if people react to you in a positive way. And you have to go outside and see how you look because there are fluorescent lights. It's common sense. A lot of it is common sense. Well, you know, I have never been able to get away from one of those people, one of those experts, without buying a or, lot thank of Thank God, we'd all be starving to death. <laughs> 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 okay, we promised the four winners um, yes. of the Jeffrey Bruce Makeover Contest. And the first one is Drina Sims. Now, why? Uh, please tell us, Drina. Drina is up there right now. Hi. This is Drina's before picture. And Drina, to me, falls into, oh, this is, I, I mustn't say it, it's too nasty. She falls into the Ginger Rogers syndrome, you which did, look like walking death now. You did practice like discipline there. A dead body standing up. <laughs> and Drina is very pale. She has white hair. She has no color in her face. This is Drina now with some makeup on and with some eyes on. I think that she looks a lot healthier, a lot more alert. And that's basically what I went for more than anything else. She wrote a letter in that she was tired of the way she looked. She, the hairstyle, I don't mind, by the way. And I don't mind the hair color, the very blonde hair. Mm -hmm. But when you go into a very white face, like she was doing, and sort of the you-know-what-hole-in-the-snow kind of eyes mm -hmm. after the dog's been there, just these sort of little teeny eyes. <laughs> now, now she has beautiful eyes. Her eyes are deep set. I purposely used a yellow eyeshadow on her. Look down for a second, Trina. A yellow eyeshadow to bring the deep set eyes out. Uh, Marie, the first rule of art Lightness brings out and darkness hides. So you want to bring the eyes out of the socket as much as possible. Mm -hmm. I think she looks elegant. I don't see why she can't go to the supermarket looking like this. Drina, how, how long since you've had the makeup? How long? What? Is it just, it just happened an hour or so ago? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about it? It feels a little different because I'm not used to wearing mm -hmm. lipstick, but I like it. You do like it? Mm -hmm. Is it something you think that you can do yourself? With a little training. Uh huh. That's exactly that's well, a little, a little training. training. Does that mean that you're going to have to stay time. on? Uh, no, that means... I hired him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am, I'm coming to Pittsburgh to do some work, but I think that what you have to do is go to see a professional, and as I mentioned before, learn how. If you go to a, a hairdresser and they do your hair a certain way, you're not handy with a curling iron or whatever. You're paying money. It is your fault if you walk out without knowing exactly what that artist did to you. You're, you're entitled to it. Makeup artists and hairdressers, unfortunately, are masters at intimidation. You mustn't fall prey to that because you are paying money for something. It mm -hmm. is up to them to show you how to do it. Mm -hmm. And we stress education more than anything else. Is it a first time for you to have had this makeup? Right. Mm -hmm. First time. Cosmetic virgin. No one ever, no one ever suggested <laughs> right. it to you before? <laughs> no, no. But I always felt I was too pale. Mm -hmm. Why did you send your picture in then? I was bored. <laughs> you were bored. Okay. I was good okay. That's a good reason. That's good enough, isn't our, it? Our isn't next it? one is quite interesting. Chloe, Chloe Lee. Chloe Lee. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very Thank much, Drina. You, you look lovely. Thank you. See, Chloe's before. Chloe is a very, very beautiful girl. She's multinational, I would say. Her heritage mm -hmm. is quite interesting. Mother was very busy. And uh, 
She looks like a kid in the before picture. She looks like a 19-year-old, which is what she is. But if you take okay. a look at her now, yeah. what I wanted to do was bring out the beautiful pink undertones in her skin uh -huh. and play up her eyes. She has incredible eyes. And she's exotic, and she can carry a slightly wild look. She wants to become a performer. She wants to go to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in New York. Mm -hmm. So she can carry a little bit more pizzazz than, say, someone of Drina's age. How do you feel about what's been done? I think it's nice. I like what he did to me. Cause you do like it? Yes, I do. Was it never like this at all before? Did no one try to no, do this? No. no. I always apply my own makeup. <laughs> do you think you'll be able to follow this? Um, I hope so. So he it's gave practical. me a couple of pointers of what to do. Do you think it's practical? Yes. Mm -hmm. see, the, and great. if you see, you know that she has makeup on, yeah. but you can't tell exactly what she has on, and yeah. that's, that's the catch. Okay. You don't really want to know. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chloe. Really, really very, very attractive. Mary Ruth Joyce is Mary next. Ruth is beautiful. Let's take a look at her before picture, though. Okay. Her before picture, the reason why I selected her is because she is a woman who is in her 50s. She didn't mind my saying that. She's mm -hmm. very beautiful, mm -hmm. but she was in a time warp. She was just stuck somewhere. She felt, I think, that as she got older, she needed less makeup. I've never understood that school of thought at all, because there is such a thing as gravity. But in the after picture, I purposely went very heavily on her cheeks for one reason. This was more to illustrate than to be flattering. I want people to see where rouge goes when you give yourselves color. I think you can see it in the monitor. Uh -huh. Look straight into the mirror. Again, we have a deep set eye. She was concerned about the puffs under the eye. She does not have what I call bags under the eye. She has a slight puffiness, which is quite normal. So what I did was I played up the top of the eye, gave her a lot of color in the lips, and purposely played up the cheeks so women can see where it goes. Rather than doing an entire segment on contouring, which will cure anyone's mm -hmm. insomnia, I just decided to do this a little bit stronger so people could go exactly where it goes. Do you, do you, beautiful. Do you like what's been done? Yes, I do very much. Mm -hmm. Is it the first time that you've, you've used first time. makeup in this way? Mm -hmm. Well, Marie, good. the problem is for many women, they do learn how to do something when they're 35, but then when they hit 50, they don't realize what has happened to the face. You've got to change. I mean, exactly. as you, you change as you your clothes. Get, of course. Yeah. You know, why not your That's face? True. That's true. Okay. okay thank you very thank much. You. You're Our welcome. Final you do winner. look very beautiful. Thank you. Our final winner is Susan. Now, Susan's a Susan natural Zorn. redhead. Yes. Uh -huh. Let's take a look at Susan. Okay. There is Susan. Susan is doing nothing with herself. The hair was hanging down. So something straight out of Woodstock. Mm -hmm. And now. With Susan, what I wanted to do was give her a much chicer look. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at how she looks now with her makeup on. That, to me, is a great look, he said modestly. Uh, <laughs> the hair is not hanging down in the face and drawing her down. I wanted to lift everything up, which is what I did with the eye makeup as well as the blusher. You want, again with gravity, we can't fight it. But what you want to do is draw attention away from certain things, so always lift up. She's a natural redhead. Her hair is beautiful. There, she has orchids and purples on her eyes for her, uh, her eye makeup. She has a bright purple lipstick. Redheads, for some reason, are always afraid of using color because they're afraid of clashing. Blondes have to be a little more careful. Redheads can carry a lot of color and a lot of pizzazz. I think she looks great. I don't know if she'd do it. She said that she's never worn lipstick. She's never worn makeup. It's time, Susan. Another You're 25. Virgin, uh -huh. We won uh -huh. the war. It's 1985. <laughs> Another cosmetic virgin, yes. <laughs> but she's you've, beautiful. She is beautiful. She, yeah. And you've, you've really enhanced the beauty of the four contest winners. You've done you. very well with that. Thank and you very uh, much. I certainly have to, have to congratulate you. Thank you. Um, we're going to uh, take a break. And when we return, uh, Jeffrey is going to uh, um, answer some questions from our audience. Great. So you may learn something. Stay with us. Back in a few moments. Still to come, Letitia Baldrige. Nothing to do. You're bored and you're blue. Hey, look inside that TV guide. There's something wonderful, wonderful waiting, wonderful waiting just for you. You'll find something wonderful waiting for you, too, inside each and every issue of TV Guide. TV Guide opens the door to a whole week's worth of viewing pleasure, to the great shows, the great games, the great movies everyone will be talking about tomorrow. So don't miss out. 
Right now, call and get TV Guide delivered to your home each week at a money-saving subscription price with three full months to pay. Yes, if you call now, you can get 30 exciting issues of TV Guide in three easy monthly payments of just $5.75 each. That's the lowest price going. Then each week, you too can enjoy lively coverage of the TV scene and the TV screen. Thanks to exclusive interviews, features, and special reports you'll find only in TV Guide. You'll enjoy the news, the views, the gossip, and the games. But most of all, you'll appreciate how TV Guide helps you help yourself to the best that television has to offer on local, network, cable, and pay TV. With fact-packed program listings, highlights and close-ups, and quick-scan program guides, plus special calendars for sports fans and a catalog of movies on pay TV. So right now, call 800-228-1010. Toll free, 800-228-1010. Enjoy the luxury of having 30 weeks of TV Guide home delivery and the convenience of paying in three low monthly installments of just $5.75 each. That's the lowest price going. 800-228-1010. Send no money, you'll be billed later, but call today. 800-228-1010. TV Guide pays for the call. 800-228-1010. Call today. Welcome back to Pittsburgh Today. This is Marie Torrey filling in for Patrice King-Brown. One of our guests today is Jeffrey Bruce, who is a makeup consultant. He is a, a resident makeup consultant on um, uh, our magazine. He has written a book called About Face, and he has given us a lot of tips today. We have an audience. Uh, some of them have questions for Jeffrey Bruce, and um, this young lady does have a question. What did you want to ask? Well, I wanted to ask about eye makeup. No matter what I do, it always looks exactly the same. I don't know how to change it to make my eyes look bigger and bring them out further. I just have absolutely no I idea. I think what you're doing, it's interesting. I don't know how close they can get on you with the camera. But from where I'm sitting, you're drawing a line under your eye and you're just sort of leaving it there. Yeah. And that can turn, turn a crow's foot into a mastodon claw very quickly. <laughs> so watch that. And eventually, it's eagle paws. You have to be very careful. I think what you're doing is really very nice. It's soft. It's safe. I think what I would like to do if I got my hands on you is to take it one step further, you know, without the safety net. I think you're a little bored right now doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And it's a question of learning, learning how without sounding terribly self-serving. Uh, Marie's going to give the number. I'm coming back to Pittsburgh to work again in September. Um, you might want to go either myself or another professional if you can find a good one in town. You might want to go. <laughs> uh, okay. Another question? I was wondering, is foundation always necessary? Absolutely because you have many different pigments in the skin. You have beautiful skin, and you're obviously staying out of the sun because your skin is in good shape. <laughs> Until next week. <laughs> yeah, but make sure, especially if there are teenagers in the audience, that you put a little bit of foundation where you're going to put blusher. Don't put it directly on the skin. But yes, you should use it all the time, and let your hair go a little bit longer at the nape of the neck. It's a little too short. The top is terrific. A little longer just to cut this right here. Okay. Not that you ask, but uh, <laughs> why not? Thank you. <laughs> we have another question here. Uh, for Jeffrey Bruce. Shall I stand? Sure. I more, or less, I more or less have a comment. My sister and I visited Jeffrey when he was here in May in Pittsburgh. And I personally feel it's one of the best things I ever did for myself. It was the most Goodness. educational, uh -huh. thorough, stimulating lesson in makeup. I can't imagine having a better lesson. I'm glad that, I came. That, that's, <laughs> that's not great. It was... What, what, when you say it was stimulating, wh what did he do? I felt real good about myself when it was over. It used to be when I would apply makeup, people would say to me, oh, your makeup looks nice, but are you real tired today? And I wasn't tired. And he taught me everything I was doing wrong, and he taught me everything to do right. And I'm just very pleased. <laughs> Did you have to buy certain kind of makeup in order to follow through on what he taught you? There was no pressure whatsoever. You could buy anything you wanted. It was available if you wanted to buy it. Oh, Marie, yeah, I should, I should expound on that. Since you asked that question, I didn't know you were going to. I didn't know myself. Uh, no, that's all right. It's a very good question. But while Joan is standing up, uh, what I do is I work in groups of four because I don't think if Joan or if you came by yourself, you could really learn what I'm doing. I do that in New York and charge a lot of money for that. But I find that when we work in groups of four or five, that you can see the technique four times. The technique was exactly the same on each of those women. It is not inexpensive. It's $100, but that goes towards anything that is used on you. 
the products are all aloe based and there's no perfume or oil, and they're mine. I, I didn't want to get terribly commercial, but you did ask, and I thought that I should explain exactly what we are doing. But um, there is no pressure, and you are getting essentially what I charge $300 for in New York to walk in the door. Hmm. But I think Joan's a good advertiser. I didn't know she was going to be here. I think, but that's the kind of look I like. You know she has makeup on. You can't tell what she has on. She just looks healthy. That's the thing. Even Thank when you, I Joan. shop for clothes, I think bright now. When I walked yeah. in to see Jeffrey, I had a beige top on and brown slacks. Disappear. He told me I look like a Band-Aid. Like <laughs> a walking Band-Aid, I remember. Like a walking Band-Aid. So now when I shop, I, I stay away from the earth tone colors, which I always bought before. Now I'm getting a lot more compliments. So thank you very well, you much. Are, you are attractive. My thank pleasure. You. Thank you. That's, that's unsolicited and you very did, nice. You did very, very nicely very nice. there, Jeffrey. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. We have some members of yes. the uh, Pittsburgh Beauty Academy. Oh, great. Hi. Um, I know that some people, they prefer like blending their colors on the eye and some prefer like just um, definite lines. Do you think that there's a, a difference if it's necessary to blend or not? Now I know your teacher is here and I don't know what they're <laughs> teaching you, so I'm going to be very honest the way that I work. I am, when people say what's the most important part of makeup, I say your fingers and your brushes. To teach someone how to blend, it's almost impossible. You have to work very stringently with them. If you put something on, it's there, and you know it's there. I loathe that kind of a look. Just take a look at Donna Mills, my all-time favorite on television. She's a beautiful girl, and you say, well, look at all that wonderful eye makeup, rather than what beautiful eyes she has. I am not from the put it there and leave it there school. Like this young lady has that line under there. If it's blended, it's far more subtle, and you don't notice it as much. Blend everything. I'll probably get up right in the neck of your teacher now. <laughs> we have another question here. Hi. Uh, you said something about uh, redheads can go with almost any yeah. color and blondes yeah. should stay away from Careful. a lot of... Uh, what are the uh, shades the blondes should stay away from? Anyone should stay away from bright blue and bright green. No one should wear those colors. And they're just too obvious. I like mauves and orchids and beiges, sort of frosty beiges on blondes. The problem is blondes, natural blondes, usually have light eyes. So we have yellow hair, blue eyes, and then for some reason they go into this god-awful pink all the time. So you look like a parade when you walk around, or a maypole, rather than someone who is exciting and rather sensuous. And blondes can look cheap faster than brunettes or redheads. Inexpensive, excuse me. Inexpensive. So what you want to do is just be careful. There is a fine line. And blondes always tend to shine, and I prefer a much more matte, elegant look. You know, something a little easier, a little more laid back. Okay. Thank you very much. Jeffrey, are there what you would call um, common mistakes that most women make? Yeah. The most common what? is that they don't know what year it is, and I'm serious. Uh, yes, there is a beautiful woman sitting uh, in the back row, and I apologize for picking on her. She's sitting right there in the back row. Over there. And, yes. And she's Drina's mother, as a matter of fact. And she has the most magnificent skin in the whole world. But she, I talked to her before about the hairstyle that she's wearing that is mm -hmm. just something that is easy, and she's been doing it for too long right now. Mm -hmm. And she's beautiful. The face is absolutely gorgeous. But, you know, when it begins to approach demolition proportions, you have to be careful that it's... You have to wash your hair every day. <gasps> I know, the thought of it is really, it's shocking, but you wash your face every day, and your scalp is a continuation of your face, and it's something... We'll talk more about it. There are some old stories about that, though. They say you dry out the hair if you do that, and it... it uh, no, really especially if you use a conditioner afterwards. Yeah. I mean, you have dry hair. And but I wash it every day. Wash it every That's day. That's why you I have dry hair? No, no, no. <laughs> a great-looking hair. But, uh, no, I think the women in Pittsburgh especially, I didn't mean, you know, to really dump on them before, because we are slowly but surely educating them. And in September, you know, when I come back, you know, we're going to work on a lot more, because we have... We're working what a is full the, week. Uh, what is the reason for coming back? Uh, we have, because of the show, uh, we've had a tremendous response. I wasn't planning on coming back periodically, but we are working on eight women a day for a full week, mm -hmm. and that's in September. Mm -hmm. And uh, may I give the phone number? By all means. Okay. I think it's, in fact, it's, if you have forgotten it, okay. we have it over there. Yeah, it's 854-3778. That's 854-3778. Yeah. And uh, someone will get back to you. There's someone there to take the call. But I wish, it's the education, and I can't stress that enough. If you come, we're going to show you how to put the makeup on. It doesn't have to be me, but anyone who will show you how to do it. Mm -hmm. Hair, makeup, etc. You do both. 
Oh, we talk about hair, absolutely. Yeah. We talk about facelifts. Nothing is sacred. Facelifts, too? Oh, sure. Mm. Eyes being done. Do you done. do those, too? I've had a few <laughs> things done. I don't talk about them, but I've had a few things done. Uh, I didn't mean for you to reveal that, <laughs> no, no, no. Jeffrey. Well, I had my <laughs> eyes done. I did have did my you? eyes done when I was 35, three years ago. Why did you have you know, bags? Or I had valise. I had major luggage. And from doing a lot of television, as yeah. you know, I mean, you can cheat up just so much. Mm. And I looked like Margaret Rutherford. And I had them removed, and I'm very happy I did it. So we talk about everything. Nothing is sacred. <laughs> well, it's a delight to talk to you, Jeffrey. Thank you. It's good seeing you again. Oh, same here. Thank you. And, um, well, much good luck to you. Thank you very much. When, uh, when we return with Pittsburgh today, uh, we will be talking with Letitia Baldridge, and we'll be finding out all there is to know about good manners. Should your name be on this envelope? It should be if you or someone you love is age 55 to 80. And it will be addressed to you if you call now for the important information in this envelope. Free information that tells you how easy it is to get valuable life insurance protection with a whole life policy that is designed especially for men and women age 55 to 80. If you meet that age requirement, you are guaranteed this protection because there's no physical examination and no medical questions. You cannot be turned down, regardless of your health. Your premium will be $6.95 a month and will never increase. And as you grow older, your benefits will never decrease. Some other policies designed for mature people actually reduce your benefits as you grow older. You may continue to pay their same premium, but they give you less and less coverage. So don't be fooled. Be careful. Go ahead and compare Colonial Pen with other companies. This is the policy that guarantees your acceptance. With no physical examination and no health questions, your premium will never increase and your benefits will never decrease, even as you grow older. So get ready to make that important telephone call right now. If you call now, Colonial Pen Life Insurance Company We'll send you the important information in this envelope, and it's free. So if you are age 55 to 80, shouldn't you join the millions of people who have already called for this offer? Shouldn't you call now? Here's the number. Call 800-554-2525 for free information about the life insurance Ed McMahon spoke about. The information is free and the call is free. 800-554-2525. 800-554-2525. It was in 1972 that uh, Amy Vanderbilt, who was the last word on et etiquette, died. And it was about five years later that the Doubleday uh, Publishing Company asked, uh, asked our guest, Letitia Baldridge, if she would just take over the book of etiquette. Uh, so this came about, the Amy Vanderbilt Complete Book of Etiquette by Letitia Baldridge, which has been revised and expanded. And it's also been modernized because um, you know, as we go on in life, there are new sets of manners that uh, come into play. And I asked, I asked Letitia before, I mean, how, who determines uh, what is the right thing to do and when and so forth? Is there, is there a higher board that says, uh, this is what we should do now? Or do you determine this? Well, it's a good question. Um, in 1922, Emily Post, wrote the first Emily Post book and she was great and she went on for years and years and in 1956 Amy Vanderbilt joined the ranks and they reported on what was going on in society and by society I mean all levels of society and economic structures and they reported on what was good and what was proper and what was appropriate well uh, after they both died and things changed very violently I would say that things changed more quickly between 1968 and 1980 mm -hmm. than centuries before. Really? It would take a whole 100 to 200 years for manners to change as quickly as they did in those years. The youth revolted, women went to work, divorces multiplied and children were left at home and fast food came about and television and all of these things really changed well, the way we live. Letitia, what, what is okay today that was absolutely taboo, say in 1950 or earlier? 
Oh my goodness. Um, we have, we live in a world where people are living together without being married and mm -hmm. there seems to be no shame or anything else attached and it's accepted in society. We now know how to send invitations to them. We know how to introduce them. Uh, this is Anne Jones and her friend Jim Robbins and everybody at we the cocktail say friend. party we knows. Don't, we don't say lover or anything. No, <laughs> we don't say that. <laughs> We're not quite that uh, explicit. Um, there are lots of things. I mean, we're on the road. Look at the way people dress on airplanes. When airplanes first started commercial travel, mm -hmm. everybody got all dressed up. You know, women in the wintertime wore a f borrowed a fur, a fur boa and everything else and had wore their gloves. And today, people wear anything. The girl next to me on the plane today was wearing a, a bra top, a bare midniff, midriff, and shorts. Mm -hmm. And uh, luckily, she had a great figure. But uh, 20 years ago, she wouldn't have been allowed no. on the plane. No. But you talk about uh, people, uh, single people living together. What do you do, though? Let's say you have a home in the country, and your daughter comes to visit with her boyfriend with whom she's living in the Manhattan apartment. And you're and not. And they come to the country. You're not all that thrilled about the Yeah. Now, what do you do? What do you do? I mean, do you put them in the same room? It's, it's kind of hypocritical not to, isn't it? They're living together. Well, uh, I think that parents can do, play that as they wish and that the children should play along uh, according to their parents' wishes. If the parents are of the old school that feels that you should be married if you're living together, uh, they will ask them to, to have separate rooms when they're visiting. And I think the young couple should do that. After all, it's one or two nights out of 365 they can... Yeah. They can have separate bedrooms. If, on the other hand, the parents have been uh, brainwashed about this for so many years, as many have. I mean, many parents today are now permitting this who, who would not have permitted it 10 or 15 years ago. Then they allow them to share the same room. It's really the children should acquiesce according to how the parents feel about it. On the other hand, Letitia, it could determine whether they'll come to visit you often if they can't stay together, wouldn't it? I don't think so. I think parents can make, make it so great for them to visit that they will forget about the living arrangements. I think it's up to the parents. If they have said, look, you're going to have separate rooms in our house. This is the way we believe. This is our religion. This is our code of conduct. I think they can make the, the rest of the visit so great that the young people will, will laugh and will say, okay, mom and dad. Something else that has changed is that uh, there are more and more women in business. Uh, have you had to develop oh, yes. a whole new set of, of uh, rules for uh, good manners yes. pertaining to... Uh, I did this. I, I was the first who came out with all of this in 1978 with the revised and mm -hmm. expanded Amy Vanderbilt book. As a matter of fact, I threw out everything that was in the previous Amy Vanderbilt book except for how to organize weddings because that stays the same and people love the tradition of the wedding and are still following that. But p when women went into the workplace, particularly in the executive workplace, Men were absolutely terrified. They didn't know how to act. For years, for centuries, for generations, they had been brought up to, to acquiesce to the woman, to put her on the pedestal, to open the doors for her, light her cigarettes, put on her coat for her, run around and open the car door for her. And now, all of a sudden, here were these women competing with equal educations yeah. and trying to get after the same job. So what was gallantry had to give way in the workplace. Now there is no more gallantry. There's what is called consideration of one's colleagues. It has nothing to do with gender. Whoever needs help, whoever needs the door held open, has the door held open. There Might are be people. A woman. There are people who bemoan the loss of that so-called gallantry too. Have you ever committed a, a social goof? So many times. Tell me, what was the last last time? Oh, I time mean, you I've done such, <laughs> such bad ones. I mean. Two years ago, uh, a dinner party was given in our honor, and I keep the social engagements for my husband and myself, and I put it down on the wrong week. And the night of the dinner party in our honor, Bob and I were at a movie, and our hostess frantically rang and rang. If you don't think that isn't bad, to have a dinner party given for you and you're not there, I mean, that's the worst thing. I've done them all. When I, in my days as social secretary at the American Embassy in Paris, the first time I sat an official dinner given by Ambassador and Mrs. David Bruce when they didn't have a chance to look at the seating plan. At this big official dinner, I sat the, wa the husband uh, of top French foreign office official next to his wife's lover. 
And everybody in Paris knew of the liaison. The two men had challenged each other to a duel, I mean, 10 years before this. Everybody knew it. And I, of course, in my innocence, did this. And everybody thought the American ambassador was trying to embarrass the French Foreign Office. If you don't think that isn't embarrassing. I mean, I've, I've really done it all. Um, when it we didn't had stop Doubleday from giving you this assignment, though. Well, I'm and a we're survivor, <laughs> and I've proved that you can make a terrible gaffe and a faux pas, yeah. and, and, and it's still, all right if you know how to apologize. And still right. survive. That's okay. right. Okay. We're talking, we're talking with Letitia Baldridge, and uh, we'll return with her in just a few moments. <laughs> water stains. They're messy and ugly, and they're also the resting place for bacteria and fungus. That's why you should use Lime Away right away, and not wait for stains to build up. It's specially formulated to clean away lime, scale, and rust stains. And the bacteria and fungus are carried away, too. And now there's even a spray Lime Away, so use Lime Away right away. Don't let hard water stains build up. Here's what you should be doing instead of suffering from cramps. And you could, with the help of Maximum Cramp Relief Formula Pampering. Each capsule has as much aspirin-free pain reliever as extra strength Tylenol. Plus, a special cramp reliever Tylenol doesn't have. The result, Maximum Relief from Cramps. So get Maximum Cramp Relief Formula Pampering and get out there. I want to take a moment to tell you about the week on Pittsburgh today. Tomorrow, ticket scalping, girl talk, and cults. Wednesday, is television news going too far? Also, John Cipher of Hill Street Blues will be joining us. Thursday, Vetus Gerolitis and Linda Hirsch. And Friday, gay schools, compulsive gambling, and Arnold Zigarelli. I see you're using soft scrub. Oh, sure. Well, did you know I that know so soft scrub works great on stoves, chrome, appliances. But did you know I that know it... it cleans counters, tiles, sinks. But did you know it works just as well on most pots and pans? Check the label. Pots and pans? Mm hmm I didn't know that. Try it. Soft Scrub's mild abrasive formula cleans cookware beautifully, even baked on, dried on foods and grease. Well? I'm speechless. Now you know. Soft Scrub's great for cleaning cookware, too. The problem with most heat-and-serve sausages is that no matter how long you cook them in a microwave, they never turn brown. But now there are broiled and brown pork sausages from Hormel. We've already broiled them, so they're already brown. All your microwave has to do is heat them. New broiled and brown sausages. Hormel has already done what your microwave can't. It's the fascinating story of John Walker, an American accused of spying for the Russians, and a lift to the heavens on an ultralight, Monday on Evening Magazine. Will Denver be the new home for the Pirates? Tonight at 11. We're talking with Letitia Baldridge, who is um, author of the Amy Vanderbilt Complete Book of Etiquette. This is summertime, and in summertime, families exchange visits quite commonly. And uh, I had asked Letitia if uh, there are certain rules that really should be observed when you do visit, when families visit families, especially when the children are quite young and sometimes get into all kinds of things and say all kinds of things. What when about Actually, when the children are of any age, Marie. Yeah. Uh, summertime is visiting time, and it is true. It really can break a friendship very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, it's up to the hosts who invite the other family to come and visit them, whether it's at the shore, on a lake, or on a farm, or whatever. It's up to the hosts to say, look, be here by Friday dinner. We have dinner at 7 o'clock. Be here by then. Um, half the time, people don't know when they're supposed to arrive, and they're, they arrive in the middle of the night, or else they arrive Friday morning when they're not wanted. So that's one thing. Secondly, when you say you're going to be there, if you're the guest, be there. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, have the children well trained about how they're going to behave, that they're going to say, yes, thank you, and if they hate the, the whole, every meal is prepared for them, it's not their favorite food, try to eat it, don't criticize it, don't say things like, I hate beans, I hate chicken. <laughs> um, really pitch in and also to carry out all their own plates and to offer to help in the kitchen and if the mama says I don't want people in my kitchen this is this is my territory 
the kids should get out, and so should the mother and father who are visiting. It's very important to bring the right kind of gift. Mm -hmm. If you know that you're going to be at the seashore on a lake and it might, the weather predictions rain all weekend, bring something like a giant puzzle. Uh -huh. If That's you like know they love games. sports and you know they don't have a volleyball net and the volleyball set, maybe you bring that or a croquet set. If you know you're all going to be playing tennis, bring some cans of fresh tennis balls because that's a great gift. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be playing golf, bring your host's box of golf balls. In other words, think ahead about the gift that you're going to bring as house guests. In and other words, you, you take a gift with you rather than send one afterwards. It's better to take it with you. Is and it? food is always great. If, yeah. if the budget is tough, you can always cook up a wonderful casserole or make some wonderful brownies. That, that yeah. kind of gift is always very welcome for the weekend. Mm. And, and really pitch in and not complain. Follow the schedule that's been laid out. Don't try to do other things. And if there's something that needs to be done around the house and the teenage guests are not doing anything, get your own children out there to mow the lawn or whatever. I was interested in what you had to say, too, about uh, uh, teaching children from the time they're very young, babies, uh, to, to have good manners. Uh, oh. And you started with the please. In other words, if you do have you know, your baby, uh, and you want you say something to the child. You say, um, you know, please, please may, may I have I this? Have. And the child becomes conditioned to the <laughs> use of the word please, so that he or she will continue saying this as an adult. And the child will say, please may I have instead of please can I have, which yeah. is incorrect grammar that we all live with all the time. Yeah. But also, you know, the baby, the baby's sitting there and throwing his spoon of prune goo in your face. And when you teach him, my, my, both my children did that to me in my hair, always when I was going out, you know, in evening clothes and feeding the babies, <laughs> that's when the boiled egg and the prune go, would go wham right in my face and hair. But when you teach a baby not to do that, already that baby, that's the first manners a baby learns. But you know something, though, Letitia, as far as some parents are concerned, it has nothing to do with manners. There are some parents, and, and there are more of them than, than you might think, who feel you mustn't say no to a child because they, they, shouldn't, they mm. shouldn't be raised with the negative. Mm. Uh, so they don't say no, and they really don't do anything to stop that child from throwing something from that spoon, which... Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's why we had the drug generation. That's why we had so many young people ruined by drugs. You think so? In the so? 60s and 70s, it was because no one ever said no to them, and they, they realized that no never had to be said. Um, I, I think that every child psychologist will bear me out and that discipline, a certain amount of discipline for every child is the greatest dose of help and aid that he can ever get. You mean these social problems that we have been experiencing with drugs and, and alcoholism and so forth can be related to this era of permissiveness? Is this mm. what you're saying? Yes, that's really? exactly what I'm saying. So it goes much deeper than, than a child being spoiled. Is that a fact? I mean, do you well, yes. that's, that's what child psychologists are now saying, yes. So children need, they love, they, they thrive on discipline. They really do. And uh, it's, it's just something that we all, we need it as adults. Yeah. We, need it when we, we need to know that we don't throw the popcorn uh, paper cup on the floor of the movie theater. Mm -hmm. That the thing to do is to take it back and put it in the litter, litter can. Because if more people would do that, we wouldn't be sitting in a sea of, of spilled Coke and popcorn You know, all that's the so true. It is really shocking to go to almost any movie theater nowadays uh, oh, see, for the money. popcorn that you see and the It's can. slobbishness. It They're is They're making terrible. lots of money, and they don't clean up the theaters. Mm -hmm. It's part of this permissiveness. Now, that's if we shame. all ate that popcorn and drank our Coke and then automatically filed out of the theater with it and put it in the litter can, that's what manners are all about, consideration for others, and makes a cleaner, better world. Mm -hmm. Believe me, manners are nothing but common sense and thinking a little bit about the other guy, and it makes things work well. And this is what, why corporations are now starting to concentrate on it in, in management training. When you were at the White House, working at the White House as social secretary, was it all good manners there? Well, it was a lot more manner. There were a lot more manners then than there are today. It was a different era. The press didn't report on the inside of the president's colon. The press didn't report nasty things all the time. It was totally different. The whole, you had respect for certain things. You had respect for policemen. You had respect for the president. You had respect for, for people in the church, the clergy. Um, it was a different era. Yes, people had better manners in those days. 
But now what we've had is something that's very healthy for this country. We've had a big revolution. There's been a big social revolution. We've had upward mobility of all classes, new money. It's very healthy and very good for our country. But to get back to the White House, there must have been some social gaps there sometimes. Well, I committed a lot of them. <laughs> I know that much. <laughs> Are you sure you should have written this book? <laughs> <laughs> yes, because only somebody who's made mistakes knows, knows the anguish of it all. It's, it's called going ahead too fast. I made mistakes, but also had a lot of things happen to me that were not my fault, such as when Senator Dirksen, who was the ranking senator, had said he wasn't coming to dinner. And then at the last minute, he, without his secretary notifying us, he walks into the White House in his black tie. I had to reseat the entire top echelon of the White House dinner. I had to reseat about 38 places when people were coming into dinner. And there was I running frantically from table to table and saying, oh no, Mr. President, not there. Oh no, Mrs. Kennedy, not there. Reseating all the top people. No, I've had, I had a lot of, of real clutchers happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> still do today. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear you're not perfect, Letitia. No, you can say that again. <laughs> I've been asking all the questions of Letitia Baldridge, and when we come back, we're going to give the audience an opportunity to do so. Back in a few moments. <laughs> Greeting cards and gift wrap, 25% off every day. National brand snack cakes, bread and buns, newspapers, books and magazines, 10% off every day. Giant Eagle is the only store with absolute minimum prices. Pantyhose, pet supplies, 20% off every day. Family pack meats, 10 cents off per pound every day. Low prices on every item every day. So you get the lowest total food bill every day. Westinghouse light bulbs, 50% off every day. Absolute minimum prices at the new Giant Eagle. Introducing Fresh Delights, a new light and lively product. Low-fat cottage cheese in one cup, real fruit flavoring in the other. Kept apart to keep them fresh. Together, 130 calories. Fresh Delights, available in four delicious fruit flavors. What kind of beans go into vanilla ice cream? This one has locust beans. As Breyers has just milk, cream, sugar, and real vanilla beans. Breyers all-natural ice cream, nothing but pure enjoyment. Come on, you know you need a mobile phone. Yeah, but maybe when they work the bugs out. Alex sounds as clear as your desk phone. Really? Yeah, but what if I don't like it? With a rental package, you can return your Alex phone any time. Really? Yeah, but they're too expensive. An Alex phone and service is only $49.95 a month. $49.95? That's all it takes. $49.95 a month for the Alex Super Saver package. Just call today and the Alex 4995 rental package can be yours. It includes your mobile phone, 100 minutes of evening and weekend calling time, and access to the high-quality Bell Atlantic system. All in a true rental plan, you can cancel at any time. So stop saying, yeah, but. Call today for complete details and to arrange for your 10-minute no-obligation demonstration. <laughs> Haven't you waited long enough for Alex? For your no-obligation demonstration, call 1-800-255-BELL. Patricia Baldridge is our guest, and I promise that uh, our audience will be asking the questions for a while anyway, and we have a member who wants to ask one. Yes, Miss Baldridge, be being a non-smoker myself, I'm often placed in the dilemma of how to ask people not to smoke in my car or in my apartment. Good question. Mm -hmm. There's a difference from not smoking in your car and not smoking in your apartment. In your apartment, you might have a little balcony, or you might have a fire escape, and you can say to the n smoker, look, Let's, uh, we don't smoke in my apartment. Would you mind going out on the fire escape? I'll hand you a drink. We'll have a nice talk through the open door. But in a car, it's a very small, confined area. And you can say to him or her, look, it's a small area. Would you mind terribly, terribly not smoking in here? Really makes me sick. And we'll stop at a gas station in 10 minutes, and you can get out and have a cigarette then. As long as you will allow a nicotine addict a chance to have a cigarette, because it's very important to them, it's OK. I, I've seen, though, some people who are smokers who have been asked not to smoke in a restaurant or a portion of the restaurant get very upset about it, though. If a smoker, if everyone has finished their meals around and the smoker has lit up a cigarette in deference to the people who were eating and waited, I think it's courteous to let that person smoke even though you hate it. You know, it's a two-way street. One has to be courteous about this. I'm a non-smoker, and I always want to die when people smoke around me. 
but we just can't cause a war, a bloody civil war over this issue. We've got yeah. to give and take, each one of us. Okay. Thank you very much. We also have uh, some of our viewers are calling in with questions for Letitia mm -hmm. Baldridge, and let's take one from Highland Park. Hello, Marie. Welcome Hi. back to Pittsburgh. Thank you. I have a question. Your guest spoke earlier about uh, the children bringing their friends in to stay at home. What do you do, or how do you uh, handle the situation when you have a widower father or a widow mother that want to bring their live-in friends to visit, and you have children that you want to keep things on and up and up? Oh. Uh huh. It's a good when, question. That is a good question. It's a good okay. question. Um, if these are people who are not your children, but they're older people and older relatives or whatever, I think you have to uh, just grin and bear it and explain to your children that they do share the same room and that it isn't the way that you live, it's not your code of conduct and you hope not theirs, but just dismiss it and just say that's the way they are and it's okay. They're guests in our home. Just let them have the room all to themselves. Yes, I think, I think you have to have a double standard here between your children and older relatives, <laughs> older friends who are not your children and therefore not subject to your rules. Well, thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you. And hello, Pleasant Hills. Hello? Yes. Hi. Hi. Do you have a question? Yes, I do. I recently received a wedding invitation, and usually on the RSVP, it's enclosed a uh, self-addressed envelope and a stamp. At this time, we were uh, informed that we had to, dry, to drop a note to the bride, and I was wondering if this was something new. I'd never heard of it before. May I ask what was written on the invitation? Uh, it was just a regular wedding invitation w without and, without an rsvp card enclosed right and All at right. the bottom it says reception following so mm -hmm. and so and i was just wondering if All this right. was something new no that's something very old the proper wedding invitation does not have a self-enclosed rsvp card and envelope the traditional engraved wedding invitation just has has the invitation ex extended and you are supposed to write what is called a formal acceptance or regret and if you look in my Amy Vanderbilt, you'll see how to formally accept or regret. You have to sit down and write, take a piece of good note paper, white or cream colored or any kind of colored stationery, but good stationery, and write, Mr. and Mrs. John Smith, accept with pleasure the kind invitation of Mr. and Mrs. Anthony Hopkins to the wedding of their daughter on June 3rd, 1985. That's a formal acceptance, or you regret because of absence from the city or due to illness or whatever. That is the way wedding invitations are supposed to be handled. I see. So it's very old, and it's very nice. You should relish that you got one of the old-fashioned, traditional kind. Okay, thank you very much. right -o. Mm, And if you're not a great letter writer, by the way, um, in uh, Miss Baldridge's book, uh, she gives you the exact wording, too, as to what you should say in some of those letters. Then you can go to the library and get that. And Emily Post has it, too. That's very nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I admire Ms. And Ms. Emily Post. <laughs> we have another question here. Uh, yes, I have a question. Uh, when you're at a dinner and, and, say, you're eating meat or something, and you happen across a bone, what is the proper way of, of removing, removing the bone it. or a, a piece of shell or something <clears throat> from your right. mouth? <laughs> Take the fork right to your lips. Move the offending piece of material on with your tongue onto the fork and then put it down on your plate. It's embarrassing. You wait until you think people are talking to each other at the table and then quickly get that fork up there and out. And if it starts to fall off the fork, grab it with your other finger and get it down on the plate. It happens to everyone. Would that, would that be the same with um, like an olive pit or? Yes. You're supposed to take an olive to the olive, get the olive off of it, put the olive pit on your fork down onto the plate or the butter plate if, if you have a butter plate. Okay. And if the olive pit takes off and scurries across <laughs> the table, which it does with me, that's, tough. that's all right too. <laughs> Thank you. Let's take another call. Hello, Pleasant Hills. Hello? Hello? Pleasant Hills? Do you have a question for Letitia Baldrige? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, what can I do about my 13-year-old son? He has atrocious manners around adults. When I try to introduce him to one of my friends, he just, he won't even say hi. He just sits there and he sulks. Remember when you were 13? <laughs> I remember when I was 13. <clears throat> and I also have 
two children, including a 17-year-old boy whose table manners at home are so bad we call him Attila the Hun. Uh, uh, at other people's homes, his table manners are fine. And so I think what m may be happening is he may be going through a tough period in his time. When adolescence is tough for all of us. Don't be too hard on him. Gently remind him of how to do this and how to do that. Gently remind him. And you know, when he's older, he'll be doing it. And when he's away from you, he'll be doing it. Okay, thank you. Hi. Thank you very much for your phone call. And uh, good, I want to. Good question. Uh, <clears throat> you've been extremely candid with your answers, and I do appreciate that. I don't know what. Well, I uh, enjoyed talking to. It was the White House that did it, or the diplomatic uh, service. It's <laughs> Thirty-five years of experience in politics and business. That'll do anything to you. <laughs> <laughs> but as you said, it just helps us live better lives, and I, I think that um, it's makes something life we should. Easier. It does. More efficient. It does. It and makes nicer. it a lot nicer. Thank you very much. Thanks, Marie. It's good to see you again. Same here. I'll be back in just a few moments. <laughs> This is an important announcement for every individual over 30 years of age. If you suffer from low back pain, hiatal hernia, poor blood circulation of the legs, edema or swelling of the feet, or everyday aches and pains, call the toll-free number on your screen to receive this free booklet by return mail. Inside is important information on how these medical conditions can help be relieved by the use of a Craftmatic adjustable bed. If you suffer pain or discomfort from any of these health problems, call now, and you'll also receive these four important health brochures absolutely free. They contain vital information on how to combat arthritis, poor sleep, back pain, and heart disease. To receive everything free, call toll-free. And we'll also send you free details on the all-new Craftmatic 2. It's Craftmatic's first adjustable bed available at flatbed prices. Call 1-800-228-3300 toll-free. Call 1-800-228-3300. Call 1-800-228-3300 toll-free. Call 1-800-228-3300. When your baby is in bed, how does he sleep? Like the baby on the left, who's all soggy? Or the baby on the right, who's wearing loves? He's sleeping in dryer nighties and sheets. Because loves help stop leaking, and that keeps him more comfortable. So if his nighties stay drier, just imagine how much happier he wakes up. Your baby's comfort begins with loves. Coming up tonight on Eyewitness News at 6, picket lines are still up today at Wheeling Pittsburgh Steel. Lisa Kelly has the latest from Steubenville, Ohio. Ken Meese is at Steeler Training Camp, where some local rookies hope to play for their hometown team. And Bill Flanagan says your kids can bring it home in an Eyewitness News van. Well, that story plus Bob Kuzma's forecast tonight at 6. KDK TV's Eyewitness News team. What a team. Before we close today, I do want to thank the members of our audience. We've had uh, with us um, people from the group called Adelphi Village, that's in Butler, PA. And also we have uh, members of the Pittsburgh Beauty Academy uh, who were here in honor of our guest, Jeffrey Bruce, who, who is really a wonderful person to talk to. I mean, as an interviewer, I can appreciate having a guest of that kind because uh, he's colorful. And I don't know whether at the Academy they teach you about the importance of, uh, you know, putting a little pizzazz in your dialogue, but it certainly does help. Anyway, I do want to thank you all for coming today. Tomorrow, uh, another very interesting show. Uh, we're going to be dealing with uh, the king of the ticket scalpers. We're going to uh, talk frankly to teenagers about growing up and coping with life. And we're going to get into cults, uh, how cults control the minds of their victims. Uh, I know that you'll enjoy, enjoy it tomorrow. As for me, Marie Torrey, I can't tell you what a distinct pleasure it's been to be here today. It's been a long time that I've been away, eight years to be exact, and I'm looking forward to the rest of the week with you. Thanks for being with us today. Marie Torrey's hairstyle is provided by Horns Beauty Salon. I was hot on Snack Pack's trail. It was disguised in a new plastic pack. Aha! Uh -huh. Back home, my partner investigated further. It opened easily. He sniffed out the chocolatey aroma, discovered the smooth, creamy taste, 
I detected it was made fresh with milk. It was snack pack pudding, all right. The case of the new Easy Open Pack was closed. I think we should reopen it, Mom. We're Beatrice. Hills is a place for kids. Check us out. Let's talk jeans. Denim jeans. For kids. At Hills. A big selection. One of the biggest anywhere. anywhere. Brand names. Lee. Rustler. Gitano. Lots of styles. Lots of sizes. All priced low. Every, every day. day. We're talking jeans. Kids jeans. Lots of jeans. You know where. Hills. Hills. Seriously, I, I buy almost every one of their clothes at Hills. Hills, Hills is, is the, the place, place for kids. kids. Check us out. I have a Coke. Sure, stranger, which one? Just Coke. Well, there's lots of them. You see, the old Coke is the old 